Hey, everybody, we are live. We're here with a couple of my friends, Justin Chando and Carl Lloyd. We've got both Instructure and Microsoft representing today. We've got some pretty cool stuff to talk to you about. Uh, Justin and Carl had a really fun weekend last weekend, from what I understand, as they pulled off this, this integration and product um, really, really quickly. So with that, Carl, I'm going to hand it over to you to talk us through the story and give us a demo and let people know what they can get out of this integration. Have fun, guys. Yeah, we've had a hectic week the last uh, the last week, uh, working really closely with Justin and his team over at the Microsoft education uh, team that they're working on. And just wanted to kind of go back in time a little bit to last week and talk a little bit about kind of what happened. Um, Justin reached out to us uh, mid midweek last week saying, hey, they were working on something around video conferencing. And uh, you want to just kind of share what what happened over on your side? Yeah, it uh, feels like ancient history, even though it was just a week ago. <laughs> you know, I, I tell you one thing as we've been tracking COVID-19 and, and the coronavirus, so, you know, obviously starting in, in China and Asia and, and our customers globally there, uh, we're, we're working very closely on the Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Education Teams with many of our, our customers and team team there. And we're able to really see what was happening and, and we're, we're able to support many of those customers uh, as they were shifting to remote learning. And we learned a lot just from, from that, which was about a month ago at this point, um, maybe a little bit more, and, and knew that we'd have this very large demand for remote learning and, and you know try to get ready. Um, but nothing like we've seen in the past week or two. And it has definitely been the, the most um, tiring, challenging, stressful, but also most inspiring couple of weeks of my career for sure, uh, working with our, our community globally. So when we saw what, what many educators, especially in our shared Microsoft and Canvas communities, were trying to do together to enable remote learning very, very quickly is absolutely to, to have this really easy way to have distance learning. So um, I, we got with our team internally at Microsoft and and then reached out to Canvas and basically said, hey, what if we did something together to make this really simple for educators to create meetings and to share it with students? And uh, Carl, thanks to you and your team um, for being so receptive to that. And you can share the Canvas side for sure. Yeah, and the reality is, is we met almost exactly a week ago. It was during the same hour uh, last Friday, and we were all together, and our chief product officer, Mitch Benson, was on the phone and uh, basically said, hey, Microsoft's got this app they've stood up. It'll allow us to easily integrate the Teams uh, meeting experience into Canvas, so let's do it, and let's do it by Monday. And uh, there was a little bit of silence, but uh, we jumped in, and we worked uh, through the weekend. And we were able to basically, at the midnight hour of Sunday night, have something that we were able to basically push out to production on Canvas. And then on Monday, worked on uh, supplemental documentation. And uh, through the week, we've been working on video um, assets to help with training. Um, but I'd love to go ahead and just kind of show the experience that we created. And um, I'm going to go through both the experience of configuring the tool from a Canvas administrator, an LMS administrator perspective, but also um, show just a brief overview of how to use it from a teacher's perspective. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of things going out online. We have a we have a, a website that has training information about it. We had a webinar yesterday that showed this tool, um, an example of this tool. But anyways, Mark, if you'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay, cool. So right now I'm in I'm in Canvas. I'm in as administrator. I'm in my sandbox. And on the left hand side, if I'm an administrator and I want to enable Microsoft Teams for meetings for Canvas, I want to go to developer keys. And when I launch on developer keys, I'll start over from the beginning here. You have both account keys and inherited keys. Account keys are keys that I have for my own account. And then inherited keys are keys that we have basically at the site level that are cross global. These are keys that we can issue as Canvas and um, they don't automatically become enabled in everybody's Canvas account. So an administrator has to go in and, and, and okay them. But right now at the top, we have Microsoft Teams for Canvas. 
and I can go ahead and I can toggle that on. And then you need to grab this ID number right here to be able to deploy it to your account. And I'm gonna show a deployment of for across my whole account. So if I go down to settings and then I go to apps and then I do view app configurations, I can add an app here. And what I wanna do is hit the drop down button and do by client ID. And I just wanna paste in that ID and hit submit. And that's it, my tool is installed. I did it at the at my admin level. So this makes it available for all sub accounts, all courses. But if there's a situation where you only wanna enable it by a sub account or maybe a collection of sub accounts, you can follow that process at each of those sub account levels. So that that demonstrates that. Um, yeah, I'm process. pretty impressed by that, Carl. I mean, just the ability to deploy an app system wide in Canvas is really, really cool. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to log out. I'm going to log in. Let's see here. I need to get my I'll log in as a teacher in a course in my account. And I've already I've already logged in to my account and office, so I already have a session. Um, so I'll I'll bring that up here in a second. But I'm going to go into my account and create an announcement. So I have my intro to geology session. I want to create an announcement saying, "Hey, we're going to use this Teams meeting link for our class time today." And in the drop down menu, I can see that my Microsoft team meeting is here. Now, if I hadn't already logged in, if I hadn't already logged in, it would have pop up with a pop up right here and it'll ask you to log into your Microsoft account. Um, just FYI on that. But if you have a session open, we recognize that and we'll auto log you in as you open this up. So. And Carl, I don't know if you knew, but Microsoft's uh, Office 365 for Education is free for all teachers and students in the world. Just want to throw that out there. <laughs> so it's a best secret. I knew that, um, and we have information on our on our blog post about this. But um, it's really easy to find that information on the Teams website too. And in fact, I have it. I think I have it right here. Oh no, I don't. Right here. So is this is this the site that you want people to go to, Justin, to find out about getting set up? Yeah, on the team? I, can, I can share some of those uh, that, uh, some of those links at the end here. Actually, okay. I have a few of those. Uh, we've created a lot of resources for remote learning uh, on how to get started. So, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and save this. And because I did this as an announcement, it's going to go out and notify all the students in my course. And they'll also get it in their feed, but then they just need to come in here and they need to just click on this and they can go ahead and join. They can go ahead and join in the webinar so I can join here and uh, I'm in Teams right now and I'm just waiting for my class to come join um, in the Teams experience. Super cool. And in there, you know, you have all the capability. We can talk a little bit more about the meetings uh, capability of Teams as well uh, on my side. but. Uh, lots, lots of ways to share content, to uh, have participation from your students, to have a chat alongside that that's persistent, uh, and a back channel for automatic cloud recording of those meetings that saves directly to Microsoft Stream. Your entire transcription get, gets automatically transcribed when you record a meeting. And that transcription of everything that was said in the class session or a lecture can be searched so that students coming back to that recording actually can search that transcription and say, when was my teacher talking about photosynthesis? And it turns out that was at 14 minutes and 58 seconds in and go directly to that place in the, in the recording. So just an incredible way to have you know, shared content, your whole class community getting together and then having all that saved and, and a, a great collaborative way to, to join a, a remote, remote learning session. Yeah. Hey, Justin, do you have some things you want to share with your screen? Yeah, well, let's let's see. You know, if, you, if you're not familiar with Teams, 
I can just very briefly give you uh, an overview of the meetings uh, interface and uh, and show you a little bit more of that. Let me um, let me let me actually pull something up and we can we can dive into that. And if any of you have questions, you know we're looking at the live uh, questions stream coming in, so please do uh, shout out your questions. Yeah, just let us know when you're ready, Justin. Hey, while we're waiting, uh, Justin and Carl, there was a question about the Free for Teacher account. Is there any plans to integrate there, or what's the what's the deal there? So, um, speaking of that, I uh, we were in a meeting yesterday, and we were talking about Free for Teacher, and I realized that it hadn't been deployed there. So, I have deployed it to the Free for Teacher environment. So, this is available there now. Oh, fantastic! That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So. Um, you know, another another way that we could do that, it looks like you're sharing my screen now, which is great. Um, and I know, Carl, you demoed the announcement part, but I love what you've done with the calendar, too. And I'll, I'll launch into one of these calendar sessions because certainly you can, you can have that announcement um, post in there. But then also, you know, creating a, a class session and scheduling it for your students might be another great option to do with this Teams meeting integration. So we can say our class session, um, is is on Monday, and uh, I can launch that same Teams meeting experience that Carl showed, and uh, you know, right from the same calendar experience as well. If we want to go into and do that, and you'll see that uh, sign in experience here. But I'll just hit the sign in button, create the Teams meeting link, and uh, and have that get sent. But what what Canvas does and pulls that that uh, join meeting link directly into the calendar event as well is super nice. So having that created, uh, students can join that, see it on their calendar, and you have that join class meeting, which how cool is that? Um, just in line with all your other Canvas events. Um, and then you get taken to this meeting join screen where you know inside of Teams, we have a couple of different ways to join a meeting. So if we go a little bit deeper into what meetings are in Teams, you, know, you have the ability to join on the browser, Chrome and Edge, the brand new Edge that is Chromium uh, backed uh, very secure and pri privacy in mind. Uh, if you haven't tried it, that's what I'm using right now, which is the new Edge. Uh, love it. All your Chrome extension work, uh, extensions work by default and some great accessibility features like the immersive reader built right in. Um, so you can join right on, on the browser, but you can also open the Teams app, uh, the desktop app as well, which which uh, is, is available. So uh, you can join on the browser right here, which makes it really simple for students to join. You know, they'll have to, download any additional software, um, but then uh, have that capability to get in. If you want to talk about a little bit about, you know, whether students need accounts or not. You know, if you want to turn this on today, like Carl showed, you can you can definitely do that. And teachers will, will need an Office 365 login, which, you know, of course, is free for everyone in the world. And it's, it's very easy to set up. I'll show you some of those documentations and how you can get going if you don't already. Um, chances are you might already have an account. <laughs> Maybe you don't know about it which is great. Um, but for students, you know, they can join a meeting without an account if, if you don't have student accounts today. But I would recommend if, if students could get a login, they have all the free Office tools uh, for free, full Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, um, at their fingertips for free. So I think a lot of students would, would love to have that capability. And then, uh, you know, if they do, they'll have that identity when they join the meeting. So you know who they are and, uh, and they can really, you know, reference them and, and have, have great chat discussions. So I'll show a, a couple of things in the meeting. Before you join, it's nice that it re requests to show your um, your video if you want to turn it on at, before joining or have the, the mute uh, feature on as well. You have a couple of other options here too where um, one of the things that I, I, I do like about meetings um, is, is the ability to have a live conversation alongside that meeting, right? So I could be sharing my screen, we could be discussing things together, maybe going through things and then having this discussion uh, alongside that meeting. So that persistent discussion that happens. And then also the recording function, which is really nice um, to, to have that saved and, and cloud recorded. The last thing I'll say from an inclusivity and accessibility standpoint is that Teams on the desktop client um, actually has live captioning as well. So you think about um, as the instructor is speaking and for students to see live captions 
of, of that transcription can be really powerful. Um, so definitely recommend checking that out uh, for live captions. It is only on the desktop client today, but, um, but definitely a great feature uh, for, for everyone to, to join in on the meeting. Hey, Justin and Carl, a couple of questions I want you to take for us. So one, Ann Stewart is, is asking about, thanks for all your comments, Ann. Uh, how do we find students on Canvas? Carl, maybe this is a question for you. How are the students gonna be able to, to be part of these meetings? Yeah, so students can access the they can access the links. Um, like they'll see something similar to what Justin's showing right here, so they can see that and see the links. Um, you can also go to if you want to see a list of your students in Canvas, you can go to the people. Um, there's a there's a course navigation link called People, and you can see information there. But there also that question could apply also on the team side as well. Like how how do I see my my students uh, on the team side? But uh, yeah, Justin's showing showing that on the Canvas side right now. Yeah, certainly. So in meetings, you know, it, it will be whoever joins that meeting. Of course, inside the teams, if you want to have a persistent uh, collaboration space for your group of students, you definitely could create a team for them. If you want to have discussions, you want to chat back and forth, uh, share resources, uh, you can you can create a team for them, which is a grouping of students on on the team side as well. Um, so, so something to think of where we, we certainly have uh, the same sort of things where I can uh, invite members, I can have people join by a join code very quickly, um, and, and lots of other capability you could do. Justin, talk a little bit about the view um, that students will see. So are they seeing a gallery? Are they seeing everyone? Or are they just seeing teachers? Uh, when the, the view in the meeting, when students join, they'll, they'll be able to see the other participants. Um, and uh, and that's pretty much it. So who else is in the meeting, uh, in your specific meeting, only when the live session is, is going? What are there? A lot of questions. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> um, Good. What else do we have here? It looks like Beth has got a question about, are you guys going to be adding a, a raised hand feature so you can recognize students that have questions, Justin? Yes, we are. Um, we announced that the raise hand functionality is coming to Teams uh, soon, just yesterday, actually, uh, in, a, in a post in a, on our blog. So we, we've we definitely heard a, quite a bit of feedback, obviously, as, as millions of students and teachers are now having live uh, remote learning sessions via Teams. Uh, so we're, we're, we're prioritizing a lot of these uh, things that will make learning and, and class sessions a lot, a lot more more uh, engaging and, and interactive. So hand raise we, we just announced yesterday, which we're excited to roll out in the coming weeks. What about this one? So I, I was pretty interested when I heard you talk about that as well. Justin, I think the example you used was about photosynthesis. When was my teacher talking about photosynthesis? Talk about that a little bit more. Uh, tell people how they turn on captions and how they could do the search functionality that I just talked about. Yeah, I, I think that's a great one. Um, you know, all of your meetings uh, inside of Teams will actually be in your chat list uh, as the meeting goes on, and you'll see some of those things that, that come in, and the recording will be appended to the chat itself if it's coming from Canvas. Um, and with your recordings, they'll automatically be sent to something called Microsoft Stream. And Stream, which I can go to office.com, which is really our homepage for, for all of Office to get you into where, where you need to, to be. And you see all the apps that are available to you. Stream is one of those applications that you think about video hosting, especially for, for education and higher ed and, and K-12 combined. You have a video that is something you've created in your organization and you don't want to be out and available to everyone. Maybe it's uh, private information or confidential things you don't want to be released, or maybe it's a lesson that you've created that created that you just want your students to see and no one else. So Stream's a great way to do that. It's not it's not public and exposed like YouTube, which has a time and place for sure. But if you want it private and just for your organization, Stream is the enterprise way to do that. Very safe and secure and compliant. So inside of Stream, you actually have your, your My Content where your video recordings will be saved to. And uh, you know, actually, I wish I had my other account here. Where I'll just go to um, uh, see if I have a, a better example on this other account here. 
um, to, just to see some of my recordings and some of the, the ways that you see the, the captioning come through. Um, so, so check out Microsoft Stream if you haven't yet. You have uh, kind of that ability to, to see that in many of those, those different videos. I'll, I'll keep looking for one of my demos. As you can see, I have many of those. <laughs> Here, this one's probably better. Um, but all those meeting recordings get sa saved to stream automatically, and you get to be in control on who you want to share that meeting recording with. Justin, while you're pulling that up, maybe talk to, to this question that was about, um, can you only see four people at a time? Do teachers have the ability to lock down microphones? Yes, uh, today inside of Teams, um, there are four uh, video streams simultaneous. Um, you can, however, go into your list and then pin one of your students to, to, to be shown for you if you want to pick a specific one to see. Um, and then what was the second part of that, that question? Uh, just the ability to lock down a microphone. So so do teachers oh, yeah. have the ability or is that just students? Yes. Um, yes, at, it's, teachers can go in there and actually mute individual students in the meeting. Awesome. OK, let's keep going. Yeah, here's one of these meeting recordings. And you can see uh, that transcript right here. So I, I have that search right here where I can go into and, and look up Saturn. Um, Let's see. And right in here, like this is where we talked about the Voyager. And I click on 44 seconds in, and it takes me right there, which is really cool. Um, so that all happened automatically with AI in the background, just, uh, just transcribing that, that meeting for you. That's awesome. What about this one, Carl? This is probably a question for you from Tim, talking about the rich text editor. Can it be customized? Right now, I can't, but we're uh, working on some. Uh, we're doing some work to be able to allow an administrator to pin um, two LTI tools to the to the toolbar at the top. Um, but that's that's work that's in progress. So we're working on it. Remember, everybody, that this literally came together with Justin and Carl and others having a conversation a week ago today. It was built over the weekend. So so huge props to them already. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it's it's got to be one of the quickest uh, product releases, at least in Microsoft history, I, I have to say. <laughs> what about this, uh, Justin or Carl? If team meeting is created in Canvas. How can I end the meeting? The meeting seems to stay live indefinitely in the chat section. That is a great a great one uh, and something that has popped on on our radar uh, very frequently on the team side where uh, the the class session starts and and uh, you you leave and, and the meeting can continue so we are working really hard to have a forced meeting end uh, for the teacher um, which is which is coming very soon awesome Lots of great comments from the community about how this is so cool and it rocks and we're going to use it next week. Uh, so so big props again awesome. to Microsoft and its structure team. What else, Carl and Justin, do we want to make sure the community knows? I think there was one question that I'd like to bring up is if they need support, who do they talk to? Um, and I think that's I think that's really important. Um, and where this is a application where there's a little bit that happens in Canvas and then a little bit and then it launches over to Teams, that can get really confusing. And so the way I'd like to break it up is, you know, if you're having an issue with getting the, the tool to show up in Canvas or having issues with uh, being able to open up the tool and be able to get a link created, you can reach out to the Canvas support team. But if there's questions around Teams capability, Justin, where should they go? Yeah, absolutely. So Teams has free support for all educators. And inside of Teams, um, you can actually go directly to the bottom left, which has this little help icon. And that help icon with report a problem is actually opening a support ticket for you. Um, and, and we'll have a live Microsoft engineer on the other side sending you a email back to you. So you can use that for sure. There's also a short link, aka.ms slash edu support. And uh, you can you can once again submit a support ticket this way. So recommend the in product. It collects um, some things that will help our engineers. 
And then certainly you can uh, sign into aka.ms slash edu support uh, and, and submit a support ticket. And, and your office admin will also know uh, a, a way to submit a support ticket to you. Awesome. Yeah, and then and then one last thing that I was just thinking about is um, there's been a bunch of blog posts and we have like community pages on the Canvas side. But if I'm a if I am interested in Teams or I'm a new user to Teams, where can I go? Yes, absolutely. So um, Microsoft.com/education. I'm putting some resources on here. If you want to take a screenshot, this is uh, a, a big set of brand new remote learning resources, making it really simple to get started. Um, the re new remote learning website for uh, just all of our resources combined. I uh, highly recommend this one. The remote learning blog that Carl sh showed before. This is a Teams EDU quick start guide, which is uh, just a, a, a quick PDF that you can send to teachers if they're just getting started with Teams. It's, it's really nice um, just to see all of the, the features and functions really handy, points out all of the capabilities uh, of, of what a team is, what meetings are, you know, all, all of those things right at your fingertips. So recommend some of that content. And then cer certainly one thing I'll point out is many of our educators, of course, globally are, are, are working on shifting to remote learning or in this process and journey together. And one thing we've created for everyone, whether you're a Canvas customer or a Microsoft customer, Etc. It's just a global community of educators right here on the bottom, aka.ms slash join remote learning community. And it's a team we've actually created with over over three or four thousand educators and school leaders around the world globally that are sharing best practices. They're talking about how they're they're uh, working on, on shifting to remote learning actively and a lot of learning that I've had and others have had uh, just being in this community. Uh, we have Microsoft engineers in there, but but also more importantly, you know, other educators and other school leaders, other IT that are working on this together. So, I highly recommend that. Just a great community to be a part of, uh, and and ask ask general questions for sure. A couple other questions, Justin and Carl, to talk about. Um, can you show Justin where it is that you would share screens? Yes. Um, See if I still have that meeting running. Um, share screens is actually um, right here. If you see the the up arrow in Teams, it um, is that little share icon, and then that pulls up your screen share where I can share uh, a desktop or window, an individual window. Um, we even have a nice PowerPoint sharing experience too where um, it'll load the PowerPoint and display it for everyone and, and your audience could go through the previous slides um, in their own view, which is nice. And then Microsoft Whiteboard, which is a great interactive whiteboard space. So if you need a quick uh, present, you know, way to live ink, maybe you're, you want to graph out a, a graph in math or, or show an equation in real time, this is a collaborative whiteboard. So you can have that directly inside of your Teams meeting. Talk about the number of people we can have in a meeting. Meetings today in Teams have uh, 250 people that can join. Um, and then we also have a feature called live events where I can, uh, the, the whiteboard was just starting, but I can have a, a live event as well that uh, you can set where you can have 10,000 people join. And that's more of a, a broadcast with Q&A, similar to what we're doing here. Talk for a minute, Justin and Carl, about about any concerns that we might have or, or or not concerns with load. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of teachers who are trying to use this integration over the next over the next weeks. Uh, is there any concern there? How do we how do we calm any fears that might happen around that? Yeah, I mean, Carl, if you want to talk on the the Canvas side, um, I can talk on the Microsoft side as well. Yeah, on the Canvas side, we're we're working around the clock. We have um, a team of in product engineering. We have coverage that's working around the 
clock keeping eye on scale. Uh, we're working really closely with our partners, especially in the video conferencing space. So Big Blue Button and Zoom and, and Microsoft. And uh, there's a couple others that we're just keeping tabs on and working super closely together to say like, here's this, there, here's this load that we're seeing. Um, and uh, let's get some more resources. Let's get some more servers uh, put in the queue um, to help build that load. But that's something that is just is really it's just an ongoing situation that we have a whole bunch of people across the industry that's keeping an eye on all of that. Yeah, and I will just pile on from the Microsoft side uh, by saying that it is the the company's focus right now to expand uh, all of our our products and ecosystem especially with teams in, in this astronomic growth that we've seen in, over the past just week, um, where, where we just announced yesterday that we now have 44 million uh, daily active users of Teams, and we've scaled uh, by a factor of, of 12 million in the past seven days. So uh, it is absolutely the focus of, of the company to, to expand our services globally and to, to serve all of our customers. So there's there's uh, not a, not an engineer in the company that's not thinking about scale and, and how to do that uh, the most effectively for all of our customers globally. So we are uh, absolutely working around the clock. Awesome. Let's talk about devices that can be used. There's been some questions about can students use iPads, for example. Yep, they can use iPads. The, um, it's really helpful if they have the Canvas app and the Teams app up. It'll um, ask the user um, to op open up that app. And then consequently after that in our testing is just open up that Teams app right away and launch the student student into the conference or, or, or the teacher. And uh, we've done testing on Android as well. And that is uh, that has also been the case. Yeah. Exactly. Highly recommend the, the the Teams iOS and Android apps just because it allows you to join um, on, on any device, right? I know a lot of educators are thinking about how how can we enable remote learning when I don't know that everyone uh, might have a laptop or, or, or something like that. And uh, sometimes a phone is, is a great way to do that, um, where you can join via the, the iOS or Android app, um, or even through uh, the calling on some plans uh, where you can join a meeting and dial in. Awesome. Let's take this one. Um, where is it that these sessions are saving? Is it to Office 365? Is it to Canvas? It is to Office uh, 365 and Microsoft Stream. And Stream is that hosting for all of our videos inside of Office, highly compliant, private privacy, and secure way to store videos for your organization. Um, so just automatically store it in Stream. Justin, what's the plan from a from a browser support standpoint? Is it is it looking, you know, is there going to be any support for like a Firefox or Safari in the future? Um, I, I don't have the latest on uh, those two browsers support. Um, I'll say that uh, that Edge and Chrome are a great way to do that. If you haven't tried out the brand new Edge, I'll give it another plug. <laughs> uh, just because it's, it's uh, you know, I was in a school just a few weeks ago before all this happened. Um, in Tacoma, Washington, and uh, many of their their students and teachers had on their taskbars four different browsers pinned because they needed it for all different reasons. And uh, one thing that's cool about Edge is, you know, some schools still have these old applications they need to run with Internet Explorer, and Edge has this Internet Explorer compatibility mode automatically that spins up another instance. So if you're still keeping that around for some reason. You don't need that anymore. You can really just kind of use use one, and it's backed by Chromium. Um, Firefox and Safari support. Uh, I know we've increased our Safari support in Teams recently, so you can you can ask that, access many of that, but not not necessarily as as deeply in the meeting space. So I still recommend the desktop app or uh, Chrome or Edge. Awesome. Carl, do you want to talk a little bit about this, or or Justin? Where where can where can students access the videos after the class session? Yeah, they'll, they'll have to go to Teams for that uh, to see the the uh, meeting recordings, which will be in their um, their chat history inside of Teams. Awesome. You could also, of course, grab that stream link after the fact from Microsoft Stream, and then um, certainly post that to your Canvas course or something to make it more accessible. Another question here. Um, lots of students have game consoles and fire sticks. Does the integration work there? Honestly, I, I don't know. 
<laughs> you know, I saw on Twitter, again, untested, but I saw on Twitter the other day of someone launching a, a Teams meeting uh, in Edge on an Xbox. So uh, it's been done before. <laughs> cool. We got some love here for the new Edge browser. Big shout out. If you haven't used it yet, try it out. Rock on. Um, Jenna Lee's giving us some love. So Jenna Lee will. Jenna Lee. <laughs> I love them. Any other questions or, or comments, Carl and, and Justin, you want to make sure that we cover before we sign off? Um, I think I'd just like to reiterate that the, you know, like there's still more coming. Um, like uh, Justin and I have been working pretty close, pretty close for a while now um, around a Teams and Canvas experience. Uh, we took a little detour with the response to the to the virus and all the schools having to jump online and getting something really quick and and dirty up on canvas um to be able to get a easy launch to teams uh, over the last week but uh, i see this as a, a continuing relationship and something that will continue to improve and iterate on yeah I'll, I'll just add on to that it's been phenomenal working with the canvas team and carl and, and everyone on your team just a, a huge thank you and and thank you to this community for everything that you're doing and and, and supporting your educators and students globally. It's, it's really been inspiring to see. And, and please do continue to share those stories and, and how uh, you know, those best practices as you're developing them, the community would love it. And, and please do give us feedback on this integration, right? It's, it's brand new and uh, we're excited to have it out there, but we'd love for your feedback to inform what we do next uh, together with, with Teams, Microsoft and, and Canvas better together. Awesome. Well, lots of comments, lots of questions. Thanks, Justin and Carl, for not only sacrificing your weekend, um, but for pulling out this awesome integration. We're interested to see what's going to happen in the future. If they can build this in a weekend, uh, you can imagine there's going to be a lot more cool things coming out. Big thank you, everybody. Feel free to keep commenting. We'll get back to you with answers. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Yep. Thank you.